it's just uh, stating the facts. We've never denied that. The purpose, it's what the trial's about is the purpose of that $1,700 check. Not whether the document was changed or anything like that. What was the document changed? What was the purpose of it? And what was the purpose of the check? And that's what the trial's about. Well, London, Ontario Mayor Joe Fontana is the gift that keeps on taking. 1700 bucks from the taxpayer was gifted to Fontana's son for his wedding. Now facing a fraud case in court, Fontana admits to changing his signature and other information on the receipt. Here to break down the case and why it matters to you is host of London's AM 980 radio show, Andrew Lawton. Thanks for being here, Andrew. Yeah, it's great to be here, Faith. All right, so uh, give our national viewers a little sense of what's going on on the ground and how the heck did we get here? Well, it's important to establish first off that this isn't just a story about London, Ontario Mayor Joe Fontana. This is a story about Joe Fontana that all revolves around the time when he was the Minister of Labour uh, for the federal government. So this is actually about allegations uh, of activity when he was a federal crown minister. So Canadian taxpayer money, not just a local story, but it all revolves around a $1,700 government check that was signed, went through the ministry staff, for a document uh, uh, with the Marconi Club, a London event venue, where Fontana's son's wedding was held and whether or not the taxpayers actually gave the down payment to that. And that's really what the trial is about. Okay, so we've seen a bit of an, a change in the nature of the case. First of all, uh, was the money taken? How much? But now it seems as though the script has changed completely. What's the new focus of what are the proceedings currently in court? Well, when uh, Mr. Fontana was originally questioned by the RCMP, uh, he was uh, actually gave a quite an amiable discussion. There's a two-hour tape that's supposed to be released to the public uh, sometime soon of, of him chatting with a police officer, and they're talking about, you know, their families and all of these other things. And in the course of this investigation, Fontana, uh, we're uh, hearing as members of the media, uh, revealed that he doesn't know whether or not he signed the check. He doesn't remember. He was looking at the fact that the J and the F might have been a bit different. And now the stories change to, well, no, the check might have been for something other than the son's wedding. So we're seeing a bit of a change. At first, it was that Fontana didn't write the check. Now it's that, well, yes, the check was signed and the check was approved, but for something else. And then we're dealing with a change of the date from one year to another. And that really will be the point in the case that uh, decides whether or not this was money that was misappropriated, whether or not it was actually a breach of trust or an intentional uttery of forged documents. Yeah, so maybe he had uh, helped himself to some of that banquet hall wine before signing the receipt, <laughs> right? Uh, okay, so talk to me, what are you hearing with respect to the legal uh, proceedings? What, what, what's the community saying there? How can we expect this to turn out? Well, it's actually quite interesting because the general public seems, you know, convinced and they've already sort of decided to take on the role of judge, jury, and they're saying he's going to lose. But there's a lot of buzz from the legal community. Uh, obviously, nothing uh, is certain, nothing is predetermined, but a lot of buzz from the legal community that he's going to be getting off simply because... Uh, there hasn't really been any ability to prove that we've seen yet intent that this was intentional. Obviously, ministry staff uh, is very, very large, so a lot of people would have had their hands gone through this. And what's fascinating is that this check was approved and deemed to be fair by all of the officials in the Ministry of Labor, as well as the, uh, the clerk responsible for this. And it's only been uh, recently, as mayor, that this even saw the light of day. So clearly in the federal government, this did not trip anyone's radar at the time. And I think that, to me, as a taxpayer, is a little bit more disturbing. How many of these other cases were not really uh, being brought to light? Because this was only brought to light by the club in question, the venue in question, uh, just a couple of years ago. Yeah, the 1700 bucks is a bit more than Bev Oda's uh, orange juice. Uh, talk to me a little bit about, I mean, we're in a city here in Toronto where our mayor has come under a lot of scrutiny, we should say. He was forced to pay back 3100 bucks, which he got uh, basically soliciting funds for a charity, not his kid's wedding. Um, do you think that there has been a double standard either in the proceedings or in media, media treatment between our own Robbie Ford, Rofo, and Joe Montana? Very much so, because when we look at uh, what's been going on here, it's, it, there's very much been a tale of two cities, especially long before Rob Ford's uh, saga had evolved to where it currently is, where what was happening is you'd have Rob Ford, who was essentially being forced through a lot of uh, hurdles, uh, legally speaking, but had been accused of no wrongdoing. And then you contrast that with Fontana, who was actually criminally charged and is still serving as mayor. As a matter of fact, 
Four days ago, he appeared beside Kathleen Wynne at a ribbon cutting ceremony. Well, Kathleen Wynne was uh, at a, uh, a campaign stop in London, and that was four days ago. And now he's on trial for fraud. So I think it's very different that we have one mayor who's walking around glad handing despite facing criminal charges. And then you had Rob Ford, who, uh, despite the public opinion, he still is uh, really free of any sort of criminal allegations that have been charged by police, who's, uh, I'd say, uh, has had to go through the hurdles of being removed from office and reinstated. There's definitely been a double standard there. And, but interestingly, Rob Ford filed his papers for nomination instantly. Fontana still has not done that. He's expressed that he will seek re-election, but uh, a lot of rumors suggest that he's waiting until after the sentence or the conviction or acquittal before actually officially declaring us mayor, uh, mayoral candidate. Uh, we'll have to see if there's rehab for public purse pocket picking. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to leave it there, Andrew. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Faith.